Now this I vibe with. This I vibe with quite a lot. All right, so uh, next movie on my docket is The Haunting of Venice, which is the latest Puro uh, mystery movie based on the uh, Agatha Christie movies of starring the same character. I forget which one this is based off. I know it's not quite like a one-on-one -on -one adaptation as opposed to, uh, um, was it Murder on the Nile or uh, Murder in the Orient Express and whatever the other one was called. Death on the Nile, that's what it was called, uh, which I both thought were kind of eh. Um, but I'm a sucker for Who Done It, and this one is. I, I feel like this one actually is the best of the three so far. Um, and I'm glad that Who Done It's in general are making a comeback in theaters thanks to Knives Out and thanks to um, the Murder on the Orient Express. I'm really and I'm I'm glad that. Uh, oh God, who? The, I know the main actor who is in these things. I really should just get in the habit of looking these up on IMDb before I click record, and yet I will never ever learn to do that because uh, I just I don't think I know what I would do myself if I didn't have to vamp myself awkwardly through any one of my videos at any point especially when I'm by myself and I don't really have what you would call focus thank you ADHD uh, Kenneth Brana uh, Kenneth Brana has just dedicated whatever is left of his, like the remainder of his career to just making these kind of pulpy detective movies that he wants to make because he just he just likes doing it and hey all the power to him and honestly the trade up, the trade up from the more glitz and glamour of like the upper class stuff we saw with the Orient Express and Death on the Nile, and trading that for a bit more of a grimy faux horror, uh, like really contained little story. I mean, they both are contained in their own way. Um, actually, really works for this. Um, it, there is a stronger a horror element in this. I wouldn't say it's just really scary, and I don't think it's really trying to be, but it does create an interesting like gothic atmosphere that really works for something like this um, and Kenneth Branagh is really having a good time with this now it's not clear if this is technically a prequel or a sequel to the Death of Nile I don't think it ultimately matters um, what does matter is just the fact that it is a good mystery it is well set up the atmosphere here works much more in comparison to the other ones where it had the really pretentious Gal Gadot moments um, and it feels less focused on having like big name stars in the movie and it's more focused like who's appropriate for this film it definitely keeps you guessing I'd say the only star powers here is like Michelle Yeoh and Tina Fey uh, or at least the big names I should say everyone else is like not I'm not gonna say like oh they're not famous enough but they're definitely not like big tier type like actors as opposed to like the last two films they're like hey look at all these big actors we got which we deeply regret now that they, most of them are in controversies <laughs> sorry Army Hammer um but yeah, no, I like especially anyone who loves whodunits. This is a very entertaining mystery. I was able to eventually guess who the culprit was, um, and some, at least some of the parts of how the mystery worked, um, which is good. I think some things that like whodunits get kind of get lost in the weeds is they make the mystery too impossible. So and to make it impossible to actually figure out. I this one has a good balance of having just enough clues for you to piece it together, but still have enough. There that you could just, unless you had some obscure knowledge, you would never get to guess the full details. It has a good balance of making you feel smart without f being too dumb and easy to guess. Um, my point is, it's well written. It has a good balance. Um, and Michelle Yeoh, uh, like, you know, it's Michelle Yeoh. She's reliable no matter what she's in. Um, and she's fun to watch here. Tina Fey's having a great time. Kenneth Brown's obviously having a great time. I loved uh, the use of Italian architecture. I love the, the, like, I love almost the pulpy feel to the horror. Like, there's almost like a 1950s kind of feel. Not, I mean 1950s, like, 1960s kind of feel to it. Like, it, there's, there's very B-movie quality to it that, again, surprisingly really works here. I mean, really nostalgic for, like, uh, I used to read a lot of Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew when I was younger. So it kind of made me feel, it feels very reminiscent of, like, those kind of stories whenever they were trying to dip in the horror franchise or, like, the horror elements um, where it was like, yeah, it's there, it's not overpowering, it doesn't take away from the story, it doesn't take, a reason, uh, take away from the reason why you're there. Um, I would say of the pure movies that have come out this far, this one's my favorite, and I do, I am happy, I'm, I'm really happy I saw it, I had a great time, um, and I'm looking forward to see, I assume Kenneth Branagh is probably, is probably gonna wanna make more of these, and I hope he does, because I feel like he's finally getting the good balance, he's getting the balance right for it, finally. Um, I think it took three movies to get there, but it makes me really excited for what he's gonna do next, um, and I'm, I'm, 
excited for it. So yeah, a Haunting in Venice. I loved it. I had a great time, and I think uh, if you are a fan of Who Done It, you will too. So highly recommend. See you guys next time.